Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we will transform flat vector art into dynamic masterpiece by adding shadows and highlights in Adobe Illustrator step by step. Make sure you stay till the end to learn my simple technique that I use to make my vector illustrations come to life. Let's get into it. Before we dive in, let's go over the tools that we're going to be using in this tutorial. Number one is the pencil tool. The pencil tool in Adobe Illustrator is perfect for drawing freeform paths and intricate details. In this tutorial, you will use it to sketch lines that define shadows and highlights, allowing for precise control over the shapes and curves in your artwork. The fill tool is essential for applying color to the shapes you have drawn. It helps bring your shadows and highlights to life by filling areas with chosen colors, adding depth and vibrancy to your vector art. The eyedropper tool is crucial for maintaining color consistency. By sampling colors from different areas of your artwork, you can ensure that shadows and highlights blend seamlessly, creating a cohesive and realistic look. Adding shadows and highlights to vector art is essential because it enhances the visual depth and realism of your illustrations. Shadows provide contrast, indicating where light is obstructed, while highlights emphasize areas where light hits directly. Together, they give your artwork a three-dimensional appearance, making it more dynamic and engaging. These elements guide the viewer's eye and help convey the form and texture of the objects, elevating your overall design quality. So the first thing we are going to do here is uh, we are going to create a new layer on top of the base color layer here. By coming here to uh, create new layer icon, we click on it and the new layer will be automatically created on top of the base color layer here. We can call this one shadow layer. Grab your eyedropper tool and sample the base color skin tone, which is this one. And when you click on it, you'll see the eyedropper tool tip turn into black. That means it has picked the color and it is here on the fill tool. Double click on the fill tool to open the color picker. So now we are going to bring down the color picker here. We're going to pick a more darker color for the shadows. Here is good. You can copy the color codes here if you want to enter the same uh, shadow color that I'm going to use. You can see from here. Click OK. And then now for us to shade, we have to bring back the reference photo. Normally for me, I don't use the reference photo that much. But for beginners, you may need to see where the shadows are or where the highlights are. So you won't have to struggle on where you're going to place your shadows and highlights. That's why I'm going to use the reference photo to show you guys where the highlights are or where the shadows are. And there's one here. There is another one below the chin here. And for the shadows, I think they are very visible, guys. You can see the shadow under the hair here. These are the shadows we're talking about. You can see here under the, under the eyelids. Uh, below the chin here, you can see under the neck, we have a lot of shadows guys. Those are the features that we call shadows and highlights guys. So with our chosen shadow skin tone color, we will grab the pencil tool and then we will draw where we see the shadows directly on the reference photo like this. Like we can start from this shadow under the hair. We can draw with the pencil tool like this. We also add this one here on top of the eye. Remember, we are drawing with the pencil tool, guys, not any other tool. If you don't see the tools that I click on, sometimes I use shortcuts a lot. You can just come here. To this bar below here and you'll see every tool that i click on if i don't click on the screen here or on the tool panel so after drawing the shadow shape we can click on our chosen shadow skin tone color which is on this box here click on it and it will color this thing to see how it looks bring back the base color layer by toggling it on and then you can zoom out to see how the shadows look you see this is nice. Then continue drawing the shadows like we did here on this side. We 
bring back the base color layer and see this is nice you can see how simple it is the moment you draw the first three to four shadow shapes you can see the final artwork coming to life bring back the reference photo and hide the base color layer and we continue shading the shadows where we see them directly on the reference photo We can draw the shadows here also. It's just the same process guys. Once we identify where the shadows are, we just go there and draw them using the pencil tool. Sometimes the stroke lines that we drew when we draw the line art, they guide us to show us where we are supposed to shade or where the shadow falls. We draw the shadows under the lips. We still have some shadows under the neck. Let's bring back the base color layer and we can see how the shadows look on the vector art. You can see how it's coming guys. So guys, it's the same thing you will do with the lips. You're going to shade them the same way you shaded the face. We're going to sample the skin tone on the lips. Let's begin with the upper lip. You sample the skin tone by clicking on the upper lip with the eyedropper tool like this. And then double click on the fill tool to make the color darker than the original one. Drag it down like this and click OK. So we'll use the pencil tool to apply it or draw it on the upper lips. And for us to see where we should draw the shadow, we will hide the base color layer and then bring on the reference photo like this. And as you can see the lips here, the, the shadows are down here. So we'll start from this side. This one is good. We do the same with the lower lip, sample it with the eyedropper tool, then change the skin tone color by making it darker. Drag down the color picker here, click OK, bring back the reference photo and hide the base color layer so we can draw directly on the reference photo where we see the shadows. This is good. We're also going to shade the eyes the same way. Sample the eye color using the eyedropper tool and it will be here on the fill tool. Double click on it and then make it darker. Choose a darker skin tone to shade the, the shadows inside the eye. So we hide the base color layer and bring back the reference photo and draw with the pencil tool like we are doing with the rest. Let's see how it looks. This is nice. We draw this side also. This is nice.
this is good. So now we're done with drawing the shadows on the face. The next thing we're going to do is to create a new layer on top of this shadow layer for the highlights. Uh, click on the create new layer icon here and a new layer will be created automatically on top of the shadow layer here. And we're going to rename this one and call it highlight. So it's the same process guys, use the eyedropper tool to sample the skin tone. Instead of choosing a darker skin tone, we are going to drag the color picker up here to choose a brighter one for the shadows. Around here is good. You can copy the color codes here and click OK. The same way we bring back the reference photo and hide the base color layer. All these bright patches of light that you see on the lady's face due to the lights of the cameras. So we'll start with the nose. We will draw with the pencil tool. Let's see how it looks. Nice. Hide the base color layer again and we draw. Just draw the way the shape looks and forget the rest. Like this. Under the lips here. On the chin we have this bright patch of light. This is amazing. On top of this eyelid we draw the highlight here that we see. We have one here also. This is nice guys. You can see how the highlights are making this vector art to pop. It's looking really nice. So the next thing we are going to do, we are also going to draw the highlights for the lips. We will sample the upper lip color and then instead of making it dark, in the color picker here, we are going to pick a, a brighter skin tone color by dragging the color picker up here. Around here is good. Click OK. Then select your pencil tool and hide the base color layer. Then bring on the reference photo to see where you can draw the highlight. Like this. You see how it looks? Nice. We can do the same on the lower lip. Sample the lower lip color and instead of making it darker we are going to drag the color picker up here by choosing the brighter skin tone color to indicate the highlight on the lip around here is good hide the base color layer and draw with the pencil tool This is really nice. So stay on the lookout on the next tutorial on how I'm going to shade the hair. How I'm going to make this hair look hyper realistic like a human hair. So if you stuck to the end of the tutorial, I would like to thank you guys for your patience and I hope you learned something today. They say practice makes perfect. Keep on practicing and you will always nail whatever you are working on. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in the next video.